these ten have been chosen to be our surgeons of the future. They've read the books, they've learned the theory, but now the practice is over. As trainee surgeons, they'll get to operate for real. Just a bit nervous. Uh, nervous. <laughs> over the next year, we'll follow them as they get to grips with real patients. From toes to tonsils, they'll be operating. A bit tense. And it could be on you. Is there any such thing as an average day? The fear that everyone has is you're actually not cut out to be able to do it. They've just 12 months to prove they've got what it takes to be a top surgeon. Welcome. Congratulations on getting this far. This select group have already studied for five years to become junior doctors. But if they want to become top surgeons, they'll have to start all over again. You are the bottom of the pile. Sorry. It is extremely hard. I think you've got to make a lot of sacrifices. You, you know, you're starting from a very low level. I think you have to be quite determined. I mean, it's a really competitive field, so you have to know that you want to do it and want to be the best at what you're doing. 2,000 doctors applied. Just over 100 were chosen to become the surgeons of the future. You're being compared to everybody you work with, and nobody wants to come out at the bottom. If you are not good enough, we will fail you. Only a quarter of trainees will stay the full course and make it to consultant. As junior doctors, most of their surgical experience has been on foam rubber tubes and dummies. But from now on, they'll be doing it for real. I'm excited. It's going to be a good year. <laughs> They're really battling it out <laughs> to get to theatre. This episode, we follow four of them. Training won't take place in classrooms, but in busy London hospitals. And have you ever been to hospital before? <coughs> Take some breaths in and out through your mouth for yeah. me. Yeah. They'll be expected to get into operations whenever they can. Any pain in the knee at the moment? But caring for patients must come first. It's a job 25-year-old Rose loves. Does anything make it better or worse? I wouldn't describe myself as more caring than the next person, but it is important to me when I see a patient that they get the impression that I do care about what happens to them, because I genuinely do. Now Rose is a trainee surgeon, she also has to find time to get into theatre. But given that my bleep has gone off every five seconds for the last two hours, the chances of me getting anywhere near a theatre today are small. But if she doesn't get enough operating practice, she won't pass the year. Senior surgeon Mr. Shri might be able to help her out. We've got an 11-year-old boy who's got presumed appendicitis who we're going to take to theatre now. And um, I've just come down to see if my SHO is free to assist in the case. Have you done many of these before, or...? Um, I haven't actually done one. Can you just ask them to come here, because they're going to wait Fine. And have you well, completed yeah. your basic yeah, skills through and through things like that? Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, and we'll take it sort of step by step. Oh, thank you. I think the child has been sent for, so you should probably go and get changed and okay. some scrubs. Yeah. And meet me upstairs in about five, ten minutes. Yeah, that's perfect. It could be Rose's big break but she has only five minutes to juggle a backlog of patients and find another doctor who'll cover for her. If you could look them up, that would be super. Well, you are for an incision and drainage if it's something simple, but it's fine, I'll do that quickly on my way upstairs. I'm in danger of being late for the registrar. Hi, my name's Rose, I'm surgical SHL call. The operation won't wait for Rose. It's already started. But getting someone to cover for her is proving difficult. Is there any chance you could do us a quick favour? It's just I need to go to help in theatre. Hi, well, I'm really sorry to bother you, Christine. Are you really busy? Let's go. OK, thanks. Bye. No, no, no. 20 minutes into the operation, and Rose finally makes it. Sorry, I'm 
sorry, Shri. Oh, I couldn't get um, Ian. Wouldn't, is it Ian? Wouldn't, was too busy to come down. Nick was too busy to come down. She's missed the crucial part. By the time she had come into theatre to assist, she'd missed most of the important part of the operation, which is access to the appendix. Um, patients come to theatre for an emergency operation, you know, that is a priority. And so the surgical training needs to emphasise that to the A&E staff and say, look, I know this is important, but, you know, we've got an emergency operation in theatre that I need to be there for. Certainly she needs to be a bit more forceful with get, getting to theatre. You have to get to theatre, though, otherwise you'll never be in a position where you're ready to progress from being an SHO. Hi, surgical search on call. Trainee oh, Rishi Deer is at St Mary's Hospital. What brings you into hospital this time? Like all the trainees, he has to spend most of his time on the wards. Come check what you've got done. Is it a vein marking and also a left arterial as well? When you're doing surgical training, you get so few opportunities. Um, to be taken through operations that you just got to take take them whenever you can. So this is my priority at the moment. Today might be Rishi's big break, as his consultant, Mr. Murthy, has called him to theatre. There's very little time to get these youngsters trained, so I'll make an attempt to try and show Rishi as much as possible. But you will see for yourself that it'll always be under a certain amount of stress and pressure. We don't have the luxury of time, that's what I'm trying to say. Rishi has worked for five years just to get this opportunity. I'm very excited because it's all new to me, so... Any sort of experience is great. So before the operation, you're just kind of thinking about what you're going to do. You're just trying to sort of go into that zone, trying to focus yourself. Everyone agree this is the left side hernia? The mark's there. OK, now. Fine. Can I have a knife now? His inexperience means all he can do to begin with is watch. Give me a retractor again. There. OK. okay. I, need to, I need to go the upturn path in the limit. OK. The edge. Are you with me, Shifa? Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. After an hour of waiting, Rishi gets his chance to do some stitching. So do you want to come to the side and do it? Yeah. Okay. Quite like the whole thing of being put under pressure. This isn't practicing on foam rubber tubes. Pull it through once and for all. Yeah. His consultant watches him like a hawk as Rishi operates on real flesh and blood. All right, Rishi. Yeah. What's he, that's too short, Rishi. Never cut sutures so short. Why do you do that? That's very casual. Sorry. So let's take one more suture here, and then we're done. Nice fibrotic tissue. Don't take flimsy tissue, that's very flimsy. Yeah. Rishi, 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 pay attention. Pay attention. Yeah. No, Rishi. Pick the edge up. Hold the mesh, Rishi, yeah. Rishi. Pay attention. You, you, Rishi, let's yeah. take a look at me. What you're going to do is, yeah. you're going to lift this up, yeah. look below it, yeah. place your needle accurately, yeah. make, so you don't, make sure you don't take, take any, any anything else below. Okay. All you want to do is take the edge of this. Yeah. Good, go for it. For Rishi, it's not a good start. He struggled with surgery's basic skills. He's a long way from doing his own operation. You can't do an appendicectomy, yeah. you can't do a hernia operation yeah. till you're not tying and your suture yeah. is absolutely slick. Yeah. It's been a wake-up call for Rishi. You are under a lot more pressure, and so I think you've got to be able to deal with it. You know, do I really want this? Do I want to take all these knocks to become a surgeon? Good is not good enough. We're looking at excellent. In just one year, these novice surgeons have to get from first cuts to performing their own operations. 26-year-old trainee Nicole is at St. Helier's Hospital in South London. Hello, surgical uncle. 
I quite often get mistaken for being a nurse. And I think, you know, some people just assume. <laughs> it's her job to see new patients arriving at the hospital. I thought come up, I thought, you can't, it's got to be something. Hello, my name is Nicola Robertson, as I said, one of the surgical doctors. She has to decide who needs surgery and who doesn't. I've got a bleep's just come in that a patient has arrived, a surgical patient needs to be seen. He's a guy that has an upset. It's on Gary's bottom, and it's painful. Um, when did this problem first start? Well, the actual problem right at the moment at the moment is about three weeks ago. Right. It burst, but it keeps coming back every like day or two. Right. Exactly the same. So it's all going, and it sort of just builds up, and, and then uh, bursts again. Yeah, and bursts again. What we need to do is, in theatre, have a look under general anaesthetic and open up the abscess and let it drain. Yeah. You pop yourself dressed again. Nicola's in luck. She's got a patient who needs an immediate operation, and Gary will be happy to just get some relief. I can't sit. I can't drive properly. I really do want it removed because I'm in a lot of pain. Mr Gordon, her consultant, is happy to let her do it. It's a good operation for the trainees to cut their teeth on. They're disgusting, they stink. And uh, probably the top tip for you is to wear a mask when you go in because the smell is disgusting. It may only be a big spot that needs bursting, but everyone's got to start somewhere. Well, she should be able to do the whole of this herself with some guidance. You know, start with the simple ones and then move on to more complex ones. I was always one, if someone got a splinter in their finger, as a kid, I'd always be like, oh my god, let me get that out. Just grab the majority of the abscess, yeah. stabilise it, and then aspirate. So if someone comes in with a massive abscess full of pus, that's, you know, the pus has to come out. <laughs> that's it. Lovely. Nicola's off to a flying start. Hi, it's Rishi, surgical SHO. But Rishi's back in the lab to practice after his disastrous operation. To secure the knot again, pressing down there. I'm human, found it hard, um, you know, last week. Um, at the end of the day, it's all about patient safety and it's all about making ourselves better surgeons as well. So I don't think you should be afraid of you know, making mistakes as well. It's better to make them in a safe environment under proper supervision so that when you do all your operations independently, you know, you feel very confident doing them as well. Rishi still needs to work on those core skills which are fundamental to surgery, any kind of surgery. He's just got to keep practicing. He's got to practice, practice. He's got to get this perfect. He should be able to do this in his sleep. I think you can, you can take it in two ways. It can knock your confidence and you can think, you know, I can't do this or whatever. Or you can just say, you know, look, I'm human. You know, I found certain areas that I can work on. So I'm, I'm here to improve, I'm here to learn. And, uh, you know, that's, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing to do that. Rishi will be back in theatre soon. Will he be able to cope with the pressure and put his mistake behind him? appendix operation, Rose arrived in theatre too late. Now, she's desperate to get theatre experience, but can she find a suitable patient? Yeah, I would be really, really keen today to go to theatre if there are any opportunities to go. Her next patient has a severe bout of trapped wind. Look, as you can see, I'm all blown out here. I'm completely blocked. If they don't do something soon, I'll... I should literally blow up. Looking at your x-ray, it certainly looks as if the bowel's twisted again. Yeah. Um, and that's what's causing the blockage. Yeah. OK. Let's try untwisting you with the tube. Plan A is a simple pipe insertion. If that fails, Rose will have to take him off to theatre. Do I have very far to travel? Rose has done well. The trapped wind has been released. 
It's a successful outcome for the patient. He won't need an operation. For Rose, however, it's another day without being able to get into surgery. It's a disappointment for her. She's made big sacrifices to train in London. She has to spend every week alone in a hospital bedsit. It's a long way from her comfortable home in Portsmouth, which she shares with her lawyer fiancé, Adam. It can be quite disruptive on our sort of personal lives, and we end up spending um, you know, a lot more time on the telephone, obviously. Um, I'm here on my own um, quite a lot of the time, um, and um, I think Rose finds it quite difficult as well. It does cross my mind, what the hell am I doing? I am a grown person. I own my own home, and what am I doing? Sleeping or living like a student. It's fairly self-explanatory. The bed is there, the desk is there, and the sink is there. I wanted to kind of get on the, the career ladder, I guess, and get some of these years ticked off. Um, so I accepted the job knowing that it was 70, 80 miles away from where I lived. I do question whether it's the right thing to do. Ready? The trainees need at least 100 operations to pass this year, but so far they've done very few. Mr Gordon's got a theatre list this morning, so if there's nothing to see on the hall, then we can go to his list. And what are we hoping for today? <laughs> We're hoping for an appendix today. It's Nicola who's in luck again. She made a good start when she lanced an abscess. Now she's facing a much bigger challenge in theatre. Her next patient has multiple sclerosis and needs a special tube running into her bladder. There are, I mean, there's always opportunities and if you don't make the most of them, then you're, you're not gonna, you're just not gonna progress that much. I'm just gonna clean the tummy. Nicola will perform the operation, supervised by senior surgeon, Mr. George Acopoulos. Obviously the risk is that if you don't put the needle in the right place, you're gonna cause damage to the patient. It's a very nasty complication if that happens. If she get it wrong, then I have to take over and make sure that we do the procedure correctly. It's an operation Nicola has never done before. She has read the books, she has seen other people doing it, so now it's her time to do it. Give local anesthetic now. The woman will be awake throughout the procedure. It's up to Nicola to numb the stomach. OK, I'm just going to give the local anaesthetic, so it's a little bit of a sting, but then that's the worst bit over with, OK? Yeah. Sorry. It's Nicola's job to force a hole through the abdominal muscles and into the bladder. Straight down. Keep going. skill and brute force. You have to puncture that. Are you alright? He's not quite me. Okay, let's stop a moment. Okay. Carry on. See if you can get in there. Press down. Push a bit harder. Why just not push and harder? I feel like I can't get deep enough. It's the senior surgeon who has to decide when to step in. It is, it is all going, the needle, we can see it's going into the bladder, okay? So it's all in the right place. We're just going to have one more go with now, okay? You're doing really well. Oh, that's painful. That's painful, okay. 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 We stopped then. Take it out, yeah? Nicola has to stop. Mr. George Acopoulos takes over. Sorry. Oh. Okay, that's it then. Oh. No, we have to stop. 
I can understand it was when you do this case and you realize that you don't get it right the first time, you may be a bit frustrated, you might start thinking, am I doing something wrong? You were not doing anything wrong. When I really pushed hard, the patient just you know, was in pain. Yeah. It's a funny ground because you kind of, then you see the registrar do it and you just go for it and you're like, oh, I should have done that. But then you, you can't because you're not, you're not used to what you're doing and they've obviously done it thousands of times. I just, I'm hoping she's not going to be disappointed after this failure. Anyway, you, you know, it doesn't always go according to plan. Rishi had a disastrous start to his surgical training when he messed up his stitching. Now, after practicing his surgical skills, he's been given the chance to get back into theatre. His patient, Maria, is having a spinal operation. I've got a little hope that it's going to be a bit better and I've got a big hope it's not going to get worse because you never know how it goes. It's a surgery after all. It's a complicated procedure to separate two vertebrae that are locked solid. As the operation gets underway, yet again, there is little for Rishi to do. He might get his opportunity at the end of the operation. All operations carry risk. Suddenly, this one goes wrong. The vessel is bleeding and they cannot stop it. Uncontrolled bleeding is the surgeon's biggest nightmare. While they stabilize the patient, Rishi is sent to get a specialist team to help. We're going to find a vascular consultant to um, help stem the bleeding. Do you know any of the vascular surgeons are around? Have a seat. Right. Shit. No vascular surgeons in there. I'm just going to find out from the board. It's not easy at all. To make it as a surgeon, it's essential to stay calm in emergencies. Oh, hello, Mr. Gibbs. I'm sorry to disturb you. My name is Rishi. I'm one of the orthopedic SHOs working for Mr. Akmal. Oh, you have Oh, my goodness, mate. All right, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> no, sorry, that's fine. That's fine. I'll ring the vascular SPR. I'll, I'll consult on a call. Can I just... One second, mate. We've got to bleed. We've got to bleed. It's inferior of the cycle. I can't get control of it. Inferior cycle artery. The general surgeons... It's, it's, it looks like it's from the inferior of the cycle artery. It's theatre two. Okay, cheers, bye. Right, the vascular's just coming to have a look now. <laughs> it looks like it could be an abdominal wall, it could be inferior epigastric. The vascular surgeons step in and control the blood loss. The operation is back on track. Rishi has kept a cool head under pressure. He was able to call up the right people, and I think that's really important in a situation like that where you do have bleeding and you do need um, some input from different teams. So yes, I think it did well. The crisis has been averted. The vascular boys have come in and done their magic, so uh, it's just something that had to be done. He's done well outside the theatre, but he still has to prove himself when he's the one holding the scalpel. start to their surgical careers, but they're all still waiting to get a big break, being allowed to do an operation from start to finish. 27-year-old trainee surgeon Andrew L. Rice is off to St. Helia Hospital to do the early shift. He's following the family tradition. My dad is a retired surgeon, my mum was a nurse, uh, so you're obviously exposed to it. My dad was someone that I really idolised when I was growing up. I've heard from people that work with him that he was a great doctor. 
So he's a role model for me, basically. I think my strongest side is that I feel that I really get on well with people. How's your pain at the moment? I'm not the most intelligent person in the world, but uh, I do come home often and think, yeah, I really got on well with that person today. It's time for the weekly ward round with consultant Mr. Thomas. You're going to examine him for us, Andrew. Listen, what's brought you into hospital? What question haven't you asked about the vomit? What does it look what like? What colour is it? What, and, yeah, yeah. Is it digested Actually, food so, or not? Yeah, what, what does it look like? Brown, like beer. <laughs> like beer. <laughs> Fairly intimidating when your boss is around as well, because obviously everyone doesn't want to look uh, silly in front of them. We think that it might be because there's not enough blood getting to the bottom end. Can you just lift your head up for me? Mr Thomas keeps a close eye on how his trainees are coming along. Things should get better from, from here on in. All right. His ward care is um, improving. Um, he's getting more confident. He's getting more confident dealing with patients. In terms of his technical experience, he's had very little experience. Um, he's got to make the use of all the time he's got to see patients to get to theatre within the limits of their hours. But for Andy, this year is also a personal test. To be honest, I haven't always wanted to be a surgeon, even up until a few months ago, because uh, I love being a doctor, but I've never really known exactly what I wanted to do. So I hope I've made the right decision. Andy needs theatre experience to make up his mind. Nicola had a tough time during a bladder operation. Today, she will get another chance to assist on a minor operation. He's having a circumcision because he feels that his um, foreskin is, is too tight and it is causing him discomfort, especially um, with intercourse and with erections. I've seen and kind of assisted in a kiddie circumcision before, but I've not done adult circumcision. Mr. Gordon is not just here to train Nicola, he's also here to make sure she is good enough to be allowed to operate on patients on her own. I don't think you know what to expect until you see it or do it for the first time. With the foreskin removed, Nicola is given the big responsibility of stitching up the skin. So literally just from... If we just take that with the stitch, or the bleeding. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is that all right? Is that too yeah. There's no room for a shaky hand in this procedure. That's better. Oops, oh, sorry. You see what happened here? Mm-hmm. This is a cosmetic surgery, so... You know, you don't want this to happen. So what we do, we cut this. Mm -hmm. You can go this way. Why don't you, your body's all over the place around there. Why don't you if I... turn this way, okay? And you're going like that now through, mm -hmm. okay? Rather than coming around there yeah. and doing it that way. Okay? How do you think it went? Um... Do you think you could do the operation now on your own without any of us around? No. OK. And what about the shaking? I don't think it's anything to worry about. I think you are more likely to have a little bit of a, a, a tremor in the, in the beginning of your, uh, your operating. So I don't think it's an issue. Anyway, good. Thank you. Learning to deal with pressure is part of the job. When you're doing something and you've got a consultant's eyes watching exactly what you're doing, it's a little bit nerve-wracking. Um, but that's expected, really. I am quite a perfectionist. I do get really annoyed with myself if things, if, yeah, if things aren't done to perfection. You know, I can 
and eat things over in my head. I think everyone has those days, don't they? Friday night in winter, the busiest night of the week in accident and emergency. Hello there. So, what, what's the story? What's brought you to hospital? Um... It's Andy's responsibility to see all the surgical patients who come in the door. I've just got a couple down in casualty. A little bit busy, but I'll get them. Anything between 20, 30, maybe more? He has to decide who is urgent and who is not. And then I've got another cholecystitis, but I'll just eyeball her. I think she's already been worked on, and then I'll come up. It's a heavy responsibility. If he gets a diagnosis wrong, it could be serious. Hi, is Andy. Surgical SOJ? On top of his normal workload, yeah. Andy is asked to cover another department. It's just unacceptable to drop it on me like that. Um, I'll go and talk to the registrar. Um, I mean, if there's no doctor, there's no doctor, and we've got to see the patients. But I think that's, that's just completely unreasonable. But all right, bye-bye. I can't cover all the ward patients. We need someone to cover all speed. So I can't stay because I've been on 24 hours and they don't allow me to stay. So if you could just cover the bleep for the night, that would be very helpful. At the moment, that means I've got all the general surgical, vascular, urology and orthopaedic patients on the ward and the acute admissions here. I'm completely unhappy about it. But it happens all the time and uh, we're meant to be good natured about it and uh, just crack on. But it's not in the patient's interest, so... Fortunately for Andy, Nicola is nearby at his sister hospital. She offers to help him out. So I've had to come across here, which is, well, not what was planned, and it probably means a lot less sleep than I, than I was anticipating. Oh, yeah. How are you, Rosie? Uh, yeah, all right. Are you busy? I'm so sorry, I've been there, but, uh, It's fine. Oh, and he said yes. But then they failed to tell anyone that actually he was coming. Tell me what's been happening to you. I woke up and the pain was and there. And it was there. Rose is working on the wards. As you're lying there now, is it uncomfortable? Can you feel it? Previously, Rose has missed out on going to theatre. She just wasn't pushy enough. It is a new policy of mine to be more persistent with getting into theatre. I think in the past, I've probably, uh, for fear of offending people and upsetting everybody, not been as pushy as I should have done. And it's really to my own detriment, I think. Her registrar, Mr Adnan, has got a perfect hernia lined up for Rose. The doctor checked it and not all of the whatever's in there, hernia, I don't know what has come out. There's some more that's got to be come, so they've got to open me up. So what's going to happen now is once theatres are ready, we'll take the patient up, we'll go into theatre. If Rose is free, she can come and give a hand, she can even do the case. Uh, but if not, then uh, we'll just carry on. You know, we can't wait for Rose, unfortunately. It will probably be quite a nice opportunity for me if I can get through the patients before he bleeps me to um, to go to theatre, otherwise I'll miss it. Fifty-fifty at the moment. Is it painful for you? It is a matter of trying to organise yourself as much as you can. So, excuse me, I'm sorry this one. The difficult thing is what you don't want to do is, is when you're rushing things to start cutting corners. Uh, but Rose is not someone who's going to do that. With only two patients left to see... He's in A&E in room 18. Rose is standing up for herself. Actually, I've managed to do some delegation, so the house officer is kind of going to see two of the patients that we've got to see. She's got a junior doctor to cover for her. Uh, I've done so many on calls now where I haven't got into theatre. I'll get changed and then at least I'll look as if I've been to theatre. Hello. Mr. Adnan's come down to the wards to hurry Rose up. Could you just ask a house officer to do it? There's a house officer until nine. 
It's got 15 minutes. So I'm going to go up so they can start the anaesthetic. No, I don't. And hopefully Rose phrase. can follow us up. I'll go up. Is it, would it be possible to do me a huge favour to get someone to take some blood from her? Lovely. Thank you very much. With every beat, my hernia is moving further and further away. Okay, no worries. Bye. Once I'm going through that door, I'm not coming out again until the operation is over. <laughs> she's here for now. <laughs> How long she stays, we'll find out. One, two, three. And I'm going to take the arm away. Everything's ready in theatre. Rose has a basic hernia operation, and Mr. Admin is happy to let her do it. You right to crack on? Yeah. yeah. Off again? Now it's just down to Rose. Has she the confidence to do it from the first incision through to the last stitch? Happy? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do now? Put another couple of stitches. Yeah, pretty. The Rose has done the operation. I've just been assisting her. Yeah, it's, her it's her operation. After an hour and ten minutes, Rose puts the final stitch in. She's done it. Good. Well done. Rose did very well. It was an operation that I did most of by myself, so that was good. Even though it was only a little short operation, um, it was mine. And um, it makes you on call about a thousand times more interesting. Now, I hope I'm a lot more assertive, and that's something I've probably learned the hard way in this four months, but I've learned it now, so that's okay. Right, now I definitely, definitely need to go and appease A&E before they explode, I think. Andy has followed the family tradition and gone into medicine. But it's only recently that he made up his mind to follow surgery. The time has come to find out once and for all if it's really for him. Today, he's been given an outstanding opportunity, a complex toe amputation. Uh, <laughs> this is significant for him actually doing it himself under supervision. We'll see how he gets on. You cannot learn surgery from a book. We learn all the principles, um, but it just doesn't apply in the operating theatre unless you've got the hands-on experience. I think the only way to learn a practical skill is to, to practice it. So whether you be a plumber or a carpenter or something like that, you can't really teach these sort of skills um, all the time on blackboards. Can I have the saw, please? The critical moment has arrived for Andy. As I discussed previously, you go through at right angles. What probably really impresses upon me is the fact that there is an immense amount of trust there between surgeon and patient. That's it. Have you heard the difference when it went through? Yes. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now that's going to come together nicely, and the end result will be. You'll have to look at the foot carefully and see what's wrong. There's just a, going to be a toe missing. You must admit that does look nice. It does. <laughs> Nine out of ten. Yeah. Sweaty. Yeah. 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 Sure I'm not sure we should have that on yeah. the other yeah. foot. Very well, I think. I think um, most uh, trainees, more senior trainees, huh? would be pleased with how that one went. I'm very pleased. 
you know, uh, but it's important to never become too self-satisfied, I think, because that's when mistakes happen. So that's why, you know, uh, I'm inside, I'm overjoyed, but I've got to, you know, keep a lid on things and reality check. <laughs> it's a milestone for Andy. Is surgery for him after all? Can I have a little look at that? Just let this hang out for me. Nice deep breaths. Yeah. All our trainees are coming to the end of their first four months. Rishi struggled with the stitching of curves. He's mastered new skills. It looks, <laughs> it looks very neat. <laughs> I'm really, really happy with that. I'm really chuffed. I felt like I was on the first, first steps of being a surgeon today. Andy's become more yeah. certain he wants to follow in his dad's footsteps. From what I'd seen so far in medicine, it's the one thing where you can really make a difference uh, to people's outcome. And sometimes you don't get that in the other specialties, so for me it feels right. And a new confident Rose remains enthusiastic. You have to find it interesting, otherwise I don't think you'd bother to turn up and do it at four in the morning and do it on a Sunday and that kind of thing. Perfectionist Nicola has had some difficult operations so far. She's had to take some criticism. Today, though, she's got a chance to redeem herself by removing an appendix. It's the one operation all the trainees want to master from start to finish. Nicola's patient D is as ready as she'll ever be. I'm scared. Because <laughs> I don't like to be put asleep. It is a great opportunity. I would love, I mean, if I can do it, and do do it, I would be very happy. It gives you that little bit of confidence that you can't do your first. <laughs> Mr. Wazir will keep an eye on the open. He'll have to step in if she can't manage. Are we OK to start? Yes, thank you. start. Yes, Now there is scar satisfaction. Yeah, that is good. Right. There we go. That's the end. What you need to do is to mobilize yeah, the appendix. Yeah, I can feel the appendix. Exactly. Right. So we're just tying that off. Tie that off for here. Yeah. Your father is there. Okay. Very well. So far, good. Now we just need to close it. Okay. Good bikini scar, nothing to see. <laughs> see? Very good. She knows all the principles, she just needs more practice. We did an appendix next to you today. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Did you do it? Yeah, I did my set tonight. Yeah. Did you? Honestly? Yeah. yeah. Good work. Well done. Good stuff. The day after, and it's time for the ward round. Her consultant, Mr. Toomey, wants to see for himself how her appendix patient is doing. She'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Nicola, you know this lady. Go and say hello. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, yeah, hello, good morning. Good morning. How are you feeling today? Uh, yeah, it's a little bit sore, but absolutely fine myself. Great. It was quite a nice, straightforward operation, yeah. and hopefully that's this all sorted for you, yeah. and now you're on the road to recovery. That's good. Have you got any questions at all? I just want to say thank you very much for looking after me and taking Bye. care of me. That's a pleasure. Okay. Um, thank you. All right. Well, how much did you do? The only thing, well, um, Mohammed was showing me how to yeah. do the uh, purse the string, strip. Um, and then there was one tie that I wasn't quite happy that I got it tied up. So, uh, so did you do it all with skill and panache? No. <laughs> <laughs> or a feeling of confidence throbbing through your veins throughout? <laughs> um, it was actually really nice or was to it do white it. Obviously, white knuckles. It's all right to be white knuckle at this stage. It yeah. should be white knuckle at this stage. Yeah, I, I, if it isn't, we'd be a bit concerned. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, 
mean, at the end of the day, everybody's got to learn. So, you know, as long as they know what they're doing, no matter how old you are, young or old, you know, you've got to start somewhere and people learn new things every day. It should be fine. We follow our trainees as their year gets tougher. Is Anita good enough to make it as a plastic surgeon? Rose gets the shakes injecting her new boss. And Honor faces a tough decision when a pregnant woman needs an emergency operation. The fact that she is pregnant, it's not something that you're going to undertake lightly.